I, I'd love to get your reflections on what the fascination is right now about buy now, pay later. Is it something macro based where we're looking at where household balance sheets are headed and how demand's going to hold up as they shrink or the saving rate, savings rate drops? Or is it just simply white space that hasn't been filled yet? Well, I, I think it's pretty simple, which is we basically, there's a product innovation. And the product innovation was, yeah, it turns out that if you can get a button on a checkout thing and say, hey, later, people want that. Now, is that you know a shocking revelation? No, but there's clearly big businesses being built around it. Now, I think interesting what's happening is PayPal's playing a little bit of catch up here. Um, you know, I'd argue that you know, why not spend 1% of your market cap to get in the game and get ahead? But this really is the type of product they should have built themselves years ago, right? And so what you're seeing is, you know, we've, we've seen the innovation. We know consumers want it in a 0% interest rate environment. Why not, right? Like, this seems like a clear thing that you can offer efficiently. Um, and now it's going to be a raise. We're going to have to see how people like Square, um, I'm sorry, like Stripe and others respond now. Do you think the, uh, the Amazon Affirm uh, relationship puts them, puts Affirm in the pole position, at least for now? I mean, the question for my mind is, is there real return on scale here? Is this the type of thing that everyone's just going to offer in a few years? And they'll be good businesses, but there's no fundamental reason they have to be incredible businesses. Um, my sense is, is that, look, a firm's a great company. There's a lot of great companies doing this. I don't think this is like a Venmo, right, where, as you mentioned, you know, PayPal acquired ahead of the curve. And, you know, I was the first investor, and that was a true networks effect business. Not clear to me that buy now, pay later is, but it is a good product, and it does make a lot of sense at 0% interest rates. So everyone does have to gear up if they've been behind. Sam, why not? Because the credit card industry sure is ripe for disruption. It's like everybody uses them, but so few people who really need them actually love them. Like the, the people who do well with credit cards are in them not for the debt, but for, um, you know, the, the benefits and the points. And there are other ways of getting that, right? Isn't this a classic case of your margin is our opportunity? Um, sure, but I think the question is, is like, is there going to be one winner in this space or is everyone going to do their version of it, right? Like, do I care as a consumer if I'm using six different buy now, pay later services versus one? Is it going to have a meaningful impact on, you know, what we're doing? My sense is not. My sense is this will be a feature you'll see literally everywhere in the future. Um, and, you know, every major service will be forced to offer their version of it. Sam, I want to make sure to get your perspective on the SEC threatening to sue Coinbase. You have invested through Slow Ventures in so many different companies that are connected to crypto. What do you make of that? And what do you think the long-term implications could be for the whole crypto space? Look, I applaud Brian coming out as a real voice in the industry and saying what we're all thinking, which is the SEC has to stop kind of doing these backroom conversations and deals where they, where they say things without giving any real guidance and having any real framework for crypto. Crypto is the future of fintech, um, and crypto is the future of a lot of things that are going to be very important uh, to our world. And, you know, we, we, the, if you think about the history, the U.S. for a century was in an incredible position, partially because people trusted our laws and our frameworks, and they were pro-innovation. What we have now is a place where the SEC is not being consistent, they're not being clear, um, and it's actually scaring away innovation from the U.S. markets. So I think the reality is I, I applaud Brian saying I know it's a tough thing to say publicly. Uh, and the SEC obviously matters an incredible amount in the business. But look, in the end of the day, you know, either the SEC is going to get their story straight and be clear with everyone and set up pro-innovation policies that puts America in the lead, or frankly, crypto is just going to happen everywhere else in the world and not the U.S., and we're going to become antiquated pretty quickly.